So we've seen how to construct the T prime axis on a two observer diagram. We've seen the angle that we need to draw it at, it's a slope of one over beta, and we've seen how to calibrate the spacing on the T prime axis. And we do so with the use of that um, gamma factor that we derived. In this video, we're going to look uh, at, at how to construct the X prime axis on this diagram. And to start, let's think about what do we even mean by an X axis or an X prime axis? Well, here's a way to think about it. An X axis is the set of all events in space-time that occur at the time t equals zero, that are simultaneous with the time at the, at the origin, t equals zero. So with that in mind, we're going to think about what x prime is on this diagram. And we're going to start um, by jumping into Beowulf's point of view for a moment. So a reminder of what's going on here, we've got Anastasia at rest, and then Beowulf is moving along. And um, let's, like I said, think about things from Beowulf's point of view. And we're going to imagine that Beowulf is um, figuring out the space-time coordinates of an event using the radar method. So remember the radar method. We haven't talked about it for a couple of units. But there's some event in space-time. And Beowulf could infer the coordinates for that event by sending out a light flash from where he is with his clock. The light flash goes out, bounces back, and a little while later returns to Beowulf. And then he can figure out, depending on how long that light flash took, the space-time coordinates of this event over here. So um, we're going to analyze one of these radar situations. And first I want to draw the picture in Beowulf's frame. Okay, so Beowulf is at rest in his frame. This will be x, this is going to be t, and I'm going to put primes on these because this is how Beowulf is measuring things. So let's say that um, Beowulf emits a flash of light at time minus t. So then light's going to travel at a 45 degree angle because light travels at the speed of light. And let's say that the um, object that Beowulf is interested in happens to be on his x prime axis. So then it bounces back. And then it would hit the axis here. Um, so let me label a few things. Let's call this event A. That's when the um, light flash leaves Beowulf. B, that's the bouncing off event. And then C is the event when the light flash returns to Beowulf. So this would just look like this. Beowulf, light goes off, hits B, comes back. And so um, the time that Beowulf would infer for this. Well, that's just the average of the time for A and C. That's how that radar formula works. And you can see it off the graph. And so Beowulf would say, ah, the time for uh, event B was zero. And therefore, that event lies on my X prime axis. Because the X prime axis is the coordinates of all those events that happen at T equals zero. Another way to say that is, if we have an event O here for the origin, the event O, um, when when this when the origin clock, center clock, click, clicks zero, and this event B, light bouncing off this point, they're simultaneous. So this is what the picture looks like in Beowulf's frame. So we've got what this situation looks like in Beowulf's reference frame. Let's now analyze it from Anna's frame. So let me start 
by drawing space-time axes for Anna. So, in Anna's frame, Beowulf is moving to the right. And so as we've seen, the clock, the origin clock for Beowulf, that world line is the T prime axis. That's going to look something like this. All right, so I'm going to now draw events A, B, and C on this diagram from the point of view of Anna. All right, so event A, that is um, when Beowulf sends the light signal out. And let's just put that here. I'm not really going to commit to a scale for this just yet. But I do know that um, you know, just like this is symmetric, it's going to be symmetric here as well. The same uh, time interval. Let's see. Okay. So this is going to be event A, sending out the light signal. And this is going to be event C, receiving the light signal. So in Anna's frame, she still sees the speed of light as the speed of light, because light travels at the speed of light. So this travels at a 45 degree angle. In her frame, is that 45 degrees? Sure. And then, let's see, when would this... This is going to... It's off right there. So this is event B. This is how the light would have gone if it hadn't hit B. And so this is 45 degrees. This is 45 degrees because light always travels at the speed of light. You just note that that's going to be a right angle. But here's the thing to notice. So we decided that event B is on the X prime axis. Why? Because event B is simultaneous with event O. That's when the origin clock for Beowulf reads zero. This is the same event. This is event B as seen in Anna's frame. So Anna would then infer that event B lies on the X prime axis. So the X prime axis on this two observer diagram is that. So this is X prime. So it's different than it was in space. In space when we have a Y prime rotated, the X prime rotates as well. And um, the new coordinate system is just a, still at a right angle to each other. Here, the T axis goes in and the X axis goes up. So now we know, um, well, what do we know? We know that the um, X prime axis is not down here, as you were probably expecting, but it's up here. In the next video, we'll do a little bit of geometry and um, see what more we can say about the X prime axis.